Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. So my name is YH. I think some of you already uh, know me from the NTC Learning Hub courses. Some of you met me through the Telegram group. So thank you so much for joining us today. And it's so wonderful to see a lot of familiar names here. Like, um, for example, who do I see here? Like Han Lin, I know you are. Uh, you used to be here also. Mark as well. Mrs. Lilek. So Mrs. Lilek is actually, she's a YouTuber. Later on, she will also introduce herself and you can get to know what she do better, as in what she do uh, when she share on YouTube later as well. Yeah, so very happy to see so many familiar names here because this shows that everyone here, we are all very keen to learn more about crypto. So today's topic, right, it is how to be a yield farmer. So before we start, can everyone just type in a group chat? Uh, yes, if you have done yield farming before. No, if you have never yield farmed before and you don't know what the hell is yield farming. Interesting. So most of you have no idea. Very good because this session is an introductory session. So we aim to really share with you what is yield farming and whether it is really worth it for you. And another question before we begin. How many of you here own cryptocurrency? Can you type yes in a group chat if you own cryptocurrency and no if you don't own cryptocurrency? Wow, very good. So I see majority of you, you actually own cryptocurrency, but you don't know yield farming. So very good because this is our target audience today. Those of you that are already like playing with crypto, you are already trading crypto, but you don't know how to yield farm. So you are at the right place today. But for those of you, you don't know how to yield farm and you have not owned your first crypto, it is fine as well. Because today we are all here to learn and we will share very fundamental stuff. Okay, okay so now, right, let's quickly begin. Before we begin, I want to give a disclaimer that nothing we share here today should be construed as trading, investment, or financial advice. So of course, we will share, we will recommend, we will introduce to you new products on how you can earn with crypto. But please take note that it is not us pointing a gun at your head telling you to invest. Whatever we share today, it is from our experience. It is not like we are crypto gurus. We don't say, oh, we will promise 1 million return if you follow our signals. So we are not that. Our aim is to educate you and share with you more about crypto, about blockchain. And you yourself, you make, need to make the decision yourself. Okay, so I just want to make this clear. We are not investment gurus. We don't help you to trade. We don't provide trade signals. All we want to do is share and also introduce to you what is crypto, what are some of the opportunities that you can um, see from this space as well. Here's something about us. So we are the Block School and we are a blockchain education and consultancy. Some of you may have attended our session. So we do have three running courses with NTUC Learning Hub. Blockchain for cross-border payments, blockchain for corporate compliance, and blockchain for capital markets. And good news is because now you know there's so much subsidy, so much funding. So if you attend our blockchain courses, right, it is 95% subsidized by SkillsFuture and Institute of Banking and Finance. So you just need to pay 20, 30 each dollar to attend a $600 course. And another benefit is that if you sign up under your company, under a fintech company that you are working at, you are actually paid to attend, meaning that you are paid $15 per hour to attend our courses. So if you are interested to learn more, you can go to our website and then you sign up from there. Other than this courses with NTUC, we are also doing private courses. Some of you, you may need some hand-holding, you need someone to guide you through crypto. So you can also sign up for our courses that introduce DeFi. We will actually walk you through the DeFi farms. We will actually help you to get started with DeFi farming. And if you're interested to learn more about crypto, how to buy cryptocurrency, how to sell, you can also sign up for our crypto starter pack course there. So what will happen is that once we get, um, how, how to say, su sufficient interest, we get like a minimum amount of sign up, then we will roll out the classes faster. All right, so this is where you can also go and check out our courses and see if you want to sign up, if you want to learn more as well. And finally, today, our topic is how to be a yield farmer. 
And actually, why we chose this topic is not because we want to share about it. It is because every month, our crypto topic are all community voted. Just like how blockchain works in a consensus mechanism, majority wins. So our crypto topic that we choose every month it is based on what you vote. So this month, everyone voted how to be a youth farmer. And then next month, right, what I suspect is that a lot of you, you will vote for intro to non-fungible token, right? Because now it's the trendy thing. And like some of you say, you farming is so last year already. So the fun thing about crypto is that every day, every week, there is new things going on. So a lot of things um, happen very quickly and something gets out of trend very quickly. So there's always new things to learn, new things to catch up in this space because every week there is new protocol, new projects. So very interesting as well. Here's today's agenda for the sharing. Firstly, we will introduce to you what is staking, what is yield farming. Why we want to introduce to you staking, even though we didn't put it as the topic, is because it's very related. Yield farming and staking, they are very related because they all allow you to earn, earn interest, earn a yield. So we will share a bit on what is the difference and what you can expect from this. And then we will share some benefits disadvantages, tips and tricks. And then finally, we will do our live lottery. So some of you here, you may have put your Ethereum address in our application form. So if you did, right, this is where we will pick one of you to win 20 USD equivalent of, of Ethereum. So quite interesting is that, you know, a lot of sharing webinar, you need to pay, but we are doing it opposite here. We are actually paying you to learn. Okay, so no strings attached. It doesn't mean that if you participate, you need to sign up for our causes. So all this monthly sharing, right, we are doing it free because we really just want to share with more people about crypto because this scene is very, very exciting. And then last, uh, finally, after this session, if some of you want to learn more, you want to stay back, um, I will actually do a quick demo of yield farming in Binance Smart Chain, meaning that I will actually add a liquidity um, add my liquidity token into a liquidity pool in Pancake Swap. So some of you, maybe you are interested in farming in Pancake Swap, but you don't know how. Later on, we will share a quick guide and quick walkthrough. Okay, so now let's start officially. Actually, right, in crypto, there are more than one way to earn. And you farming is just one way and it may not be the best way. The first one is what everyone know already. You can earn in crypto by buying and holding your cryptocurrency. Some of you may want to buy like Ethereum, Bitcoin, and then you buy and then you just keep it in your wallet. You see the price appreciate. As we all know, Bitcoin has appreciated so much. Just a few months ago, it was 30,000. Now it's over 60,000. So actually, right, personally, I feel that if you are very new to crypto, you don't even need to do anything. You can just buy and hold. That's the safest way already. And then you can already earn way, 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 way more than what you're earning in traditional finance. The second way is trading cryptocurrency. So when you trade cryptocurrency, you can do spot trading. You can also do futures derivative trading like margin trading. Some of you may also be more professional traders. So you may actually know how to trade options as well. So crypto market, right, it is very similar to traditional finance. In traditional finance, you can see derivative trading, futures trading, options trading, and this you can also find in the crypto market. Of course, it's not so uh, well developed yet because crypto is still considered quite a new financial market. And last but not least, this one is very trendy now, participating in DeFi. So last month, we shared on introduction to DeFi. Some of you may have missed our session. You can go to our YouTube channel to catch it as well. So when you participate in DeFi, there are different ways. One way is to stake your token. The other way is to do yield farming. And of course, other than that in DeFi, you can also do trading, like derivative trading, options trading, just in DeFi. Oh, and, and I have a question here for everyone. So which way do you think it is the most profitable? Is it the number one way buying, number two or number three? Can you please type in the group chat?
All right, H, very good. Method one when Elon Musk tweet. Yes, because you know this market is so new, right? And then like Elon Musk, he is a proponent of crypto. Sometimes he will tweet like Dogecoin. Dogecoin is like a, a meme, meme token of a dog. So whenever he tweet about Doge, the price goes up. Yeah, so very interesting is that because this market is so new and young, right? You can actually get your alpha. You can get actually get a lot of good tips on Twitter. So if you are keen to learn more about this space, uh, feel free to follow all the random crypto accounts because unlike other industry, right? Actually in crypto, you can learn a lot about the crypto market by following people on Twitter and following people who shit post, meaning they post rubbish. You can also learn. So that's a fun thing about crypto as well. Yeah, so I see a mixture. All three. Um, Peter say one, Alex, you say two, Mrs. Lilac, you say high APY on three. Yes, yeah, so basically, right, the fact is that you can earn from all three, depending on your proficiency level, meaning that how much you know about crypto. If you are a first timer, you haven't even buy your first crypto, you want to go into point three, I would say wait first, don't kanchong, okay, because the fact is that buying and holding, you can already earn a lot. You don't necessarily need to participate right now. And you shouldn't because there's some things you need to learn, some stuff you need to get on board first before you can be comfortable with DeFi. So here's a very common misconception. A lot of people may think that, oh, yield farming is the most profitable because the APY is crazy. So for example, some yield farms, right, you can see up to... 100% to 8,000 APY. But let me just highlight here that the APY, right, they don't stay constant. It will fluctuate and reduce over time. Especially, for example, day one of a farm. When you go into the farm, there may be like 3,000 APY. Oh, before I move on, right, let me just share, I will introduce about yield farming later. This is just a, a short sharing. So for those of you that don't understand what I'm talking about, it is fine. Just wait a moment because I will share more shortly on what is yield farming. Okay. And the second, the third point is that token price may also depreciate, meaning that when you join a yield farm, the yield, the farm token that they give you, it may be $100 when you join. But it is very common for the token to uh, go down deep into like $1 or even $20, which leads us to another point of pool two. Pool two, you will face some problems called impermanent loss. I know a lot of you now when I talk about pool two, impermanent loss, you don't know what I'm talking about. But don't worry, this one we will share later. Okay. And there is also a spike in DeFi bucket shops that may rock pool. Bucket shop, we mean um, DeFi projects that copy and paste, meaning that they copy the code from other projects. They make their own. So it look exactly the same. They didn't put in much effort in developing the protocol. They just copy paste. And a lot of these projects, because they are with anonymous founder, meaning their founders are not known. So they may rub pool, meaning they may do exit scam. And whatever you put in, if you didn't check their smart contract, you may actually lose 100% of your capital. Okay, so I want to highlight here that yes, DeFi, yield farming, you can earn a lot, but you have a risk of losing all as well. So later on, I will share more and introduce more on what is yield farming because I know some of you are already confused. What I mean by pool two, what I mean by impermanent loss, what I mean by rug pool. So this one we will share later. But now you just need to know that yield farming is considered very lucrative because they provide APR of, for example, you see here, 23,000. How many times more is this compared to DBS interest? Your regular uh, stock market trading, it is way a lot more, which is why we have attracted a lot of interest in yield farming in DeFi. And if you look at here, the image here, you can see that, okay, for example, this is a farming token. And you can see that the price has appreciated a lot, but it has dropped down. So it means that, let's say I participate in this farm, I get a lot of this token, but in the end, if the price drops to $1 from $10, I'm actually losing. There is actually a loss here. Okay. And here's a comparison between traditional finance and crypto. A lot of us, we use DBS, 
DBS multiplier, it used to be like, wow, 3% per annum is very much. Then we feel very happy because we are letting our money work for us. We are letting our savings work for us. But the fact is that in crypto, even if we don't talk about yield farming, we talk about just participating in staking, um, participating in exchange product. You can get at least 5 to 12% per annum for stable token interest without yield farming. So I think this is very good for beginners who want to try because yield farming is not suitable for you right now. But you can actually participate in other things that you can already earn more. So here's an example. If you look at this crypto earn, it is by crypto.com, which is a crypto company that provides a crypto visa card and also for you to buy, sell, stake crypto. If you look at this term, USD Tether refers to a cryptocurrency pegged to US dollar. So it is one one peg to US dollar. And if you look at their crypto earn term, their product, you can see that if you deposit your USD Tether, which is like US dollar, you can earn 8% per annum in this flexible term. If you choose a one month term, meaning that you lock up your asset with them for one month, you can get higher interest, which is 10% per annum. And if you choose to lock up for three months, you can get 12% per annum. So here I want to highlight that even without you farming, you just want to start. You can look at all these um, project products that offer already very competitive rates. So this is like compared to savings, right? Let's say I save 10,000 US dollar. I put in DBS multiplier. The max I can get is 3.5%. But if I put this 10,000 USD in crypto.com crypto earn, in a flexible term, I can already get 8%. So the percent yield is already higher, way higher than traditional finance. But of course, there are also risks involved that we will share later as well. So before we share on what is yield farming, let me quickly share on what is staking because these two terms are very, how to say, very related. So staking, there are three ways you can look at staking. The first original way it is directly participating in a blockchain network. Because for blockchain, right, how they work is that they have a consensus mechanism. So one of the consensus mechanism, you can go and Google if you want to learn more because today we only have one hour. I don't have uh, enough time. So one consensus mechanism is called proof of stake. Proof of stake meaning that you can uh, put your token um, to help to validate the network, to help to strengthen the network. So the blockchain network uh, works by uh, people putting in their token, staking their stake um, to ensure that the transactions are validated. Yeah, so when they stake their token with the blockchain network, they will get a reward which is more token. So this was initially what staking was all about. You put in tokens into a protocol, you help to validate transactions, you help to secure the network. They reward you with tokens. So this is the original staking. And then with this, exchanges have started to offer staking products. So exchanges, you can earn interest from the funds you deposit with the exchange, which is the custodian. And these staking funds could be on-chain or off-chain. On-chain mean, meaning that the exchange, right, they help you to stake in the blockchain network. Off-chain meaning that sometimes the exchange, they may call it staking, but they don't really help you to stake in the blockchain. Maybe they are offering other products. Um, for example, lending product. So if you deposit your crypto with them, they use your token to offer as... Um, for the, for the borrower pool, meaning that you become a money lender to them. So when their borrowers, right, borrow your crypto for trading, then you earn interest because it's like loan shark. When a loan shark provide money, when people pay back the loan shark, they will charge interest. So this is where some of the interest from staking come from, from the borrower, from the lender pool. And the third way is staking on DeFi projects. So some projects, right, the way they launch is very interesting. You can actually stake, let's say, Ethereum to get a token, depending on what the project wants to do. 
So this is some way for DeFi projects to launch and also to distribute tokens. So for example, I come up with my own DeFi project called YH Project. Maybe I can say, oh, my initial launch, right? You can stake Ethereum to um, get YH token. So basically it's free. The only cost you need to pay is you need to stake a token. So this is how it works. Staking right now is not just about participating in the proof of stake blockchain mechanism. It could mean other things, such as exchange offering staking, staking on DeFi. So if you see this image here, this is an example. So for example, the Big Data Protocol is a new project that uh, launched recently. And what they did was, instead of, selling their, instead of selling tokens to people directly, they actually enable liquidity mining, yield farming, which means that if you have tokens from other projects, you can stake it in their protocol to get Big Data Protocol token. So here you can see, in this ocean pool, if you are an ocean token holder, you can deposit your ocean into this pool. And the APR fluctuating, of course, right now is 800%. So they will actually distribute BDP token to you if you stick in the ocean pool. So this is an example of how DeFi projects are using staking as a way to launch their tokens. Okay, so this is an example of you farming as well. But in this case, you are farming for the new project launch token. So now we come to the main point, which is what is yield farming? So yield farming, right, you can treat it as um, like a money changer. So for example, traditionally in exchange, there is like a, um, trading, there is a market maker for each token that you want to trade. There is already market maker that has been maybe engaged by the exchange to uh, monitor the order book to make sure that trades can run smoothly. So this is traditional finance trading. But for DeFi, in DeFi, uh, when you do a DeFi protocol exchange, instead of market makers helping with the order book. Now you just have um, DeFi exchanges running on automated market maker technology. So what we mean by that is that AMM technology refers to smart contract that creates a liquidity pool of ERC20 token. It could be other token. Actually, this is just Ethereum, which are automatically traded by an algorithm rather than an order book. So for DeFi exchange, right, instead of having a lot of like middlemen, instead of having um, market makers to maintain an order book, they have this technology called automated market maker technology. So it's a bit like robot in the, in the case whereby smart contracts, right, they are a kind of computerized protocol that automatically executes a term of a contract when certain conditions are met. So it's a bit of automating the trade process, automating trading. And where yield farming comes into play is that now instead of having centralized money changes, everyone here, we can be a money changer. We can contribute. And what I mean by that is that for each of the trading tokens, for example, um, let's say I have YH token. I want to trade it against Johnny token. Okay, so... Uh, I need to come up with a trading pair called YH slash Johnny, right? So in order for this um, trading pair to start trading and to work, we need the token, right? We need liquidity. We need someone to give the supply. So in traditional centralized exchange, the exchange, they will manage all this. They will go and um, pump up the supply pool. They um, go and... Um, have their own market maker. But for DeFi, anyone here, we can all be contributing to the liquidity pool, meaning that we can contribute tokens to the liquidity pool to make up the order book per se. So with this, since we are helping to contribute the capital, we are incentivized and we are rewarded for it. And this is where yield farming comes into play. So yield farming, users can earn by being a liquidity provider in decentralized exchange for trading pairs. 
in two ways. The first way you can earn is you get a cut of the trading fee per transaction. So for example, my example of YH and Johnny token, someone did a trade. So every time someone do a trade, the person will pay a cut for the trading fee. And this fee will be distributed to the liquidity provider. And the second way you can earn is, of course, you can earn by earning the yield from being a farmer. And who provides the yield? This is what we will share. So where does the yield in yield farming come from? One very, very um, big way of where the yield come from is through project token allocation. So the project themselves, they will allocate a pool of their supply as yield. And why they want to do that, right, is very simple. They want to attract liquidity provider. They want to attract people to start depositing into their protocol so that um, all the exchange pairs, they have sufficient liquidity to trade. And the second one is the yield. It comes from the trading fee as well because you do get a part of the trading fee if you be a liquidity provider. And the third point is a bit different because here it's not about yield farming, but staking. So for staking or interest-bearing products, some of you also may think, why do they offer such high interest? So why they offer high interest is because of lending rate. You know why lending rate, right? They still can offer like, let's say, 15% interest for a stable token. Why is it so much higher than traditional finance? The answer is because at the other side, when the lenders lend the stable token, right? They don't even mind paying 20% in interest to lend the amount. And the reason why is because a lot of them trade. So they lend the stable token, they do their own trading. And as you know, crypto is so volatile. So even though they lend stable token for 20% interest, to them it's still a good deal because they can earn way more by trading. So which is why in traditional finance and crypto, right, it's very different because even if interest rate is very high for the lenders from the other side of the protocol, they can still earn a lot. So to them, paying 20% is not too high, which is good for us because if we are the one providing the capital to lend to them, we get 20% interest. To us, it's very good. But to them, it's also very good. So it's a win-win situation. And this is why traditional finance and crypto, you see such a disparity, right? Because I, I don't think traditional finance, if the lenders, they lend, they pay 5% interest. To them, it may be expensive because they cannot earn it back. But for crypto, because the market is so volatile, there are so many opportunities for them to earn back their interest that they incur from borrowing the token. So here's an example you can see from this news. So DeFi Vampire Sushi Swap sucks 800 million from Uniswap. So this is an example of a vampire attack. And what we mean by that is that a lot of DeFi protocol, they want to attract you and they want to attract liquidity provider. So what they do is they offer very, very attractive yield. Like for example, if you deposit Ethereum, I will give you 50% interest. Then everyone will be like, wow, I want to deposit because I want to earn an interest. So this is how they... Like, like a vampire, they suck liquidity from other protocol. Initially, SushiSwap, when they just launched, they kind of did that. So they actually um, moved a lot of liquidity provider from Uniswap, which is one of the more uh, older DeFi protocol that has been out there. So this is a way for protocols to compete with each other by offering higher yield. Because a lot of us here, we just want to go and put our money somewhere that we can earn the most. So when we hear of a protocol giving more yield, then we will rush there to put our token. So this is what happened. And this is something I want to share. So as you farmer, you need to be like that. You need to constantly monitor the market. You need to constantly change your crop. You cannot just stuck, stick your crop in the same place like when you do farming, like real farming. You need to really observe the market, you need to um, see what's happening, and then you shift your crop accordingly. Of course, unless you are looking for a more prudent and safe effort or measure, then you won't keep changing your crop, but you will just find a project that is trustworthy and provide significant yield. Then you can just stay there forever. 
So it really depends on your risk appetite and what you want to earn. And let me just share a bit about impermanent loss because this is very important if you are looking to be a yield farmer. So for example, when you want to provide liquidity, there is always two sides. You can think of it as a, like a balancing scale, like a weighing machine. So for example, you want to contribute to the DAI Ethereum um, trading pool, uh, sorry, liquidity pool. So maybe what you can do is you put in 1,000 DAI and, one, and 10 Ethereum. Okay, to start. So you contribute this liquidity. And why is it half-half? Because most DeFi protocols now, it is half-half, but there are already some that do 100% or 25%, 75%. So it is not always 50-50, but majority of the DeFi protocol do 50-50. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say, right, I want to be a liquidity provider. So I provide 1,000 DAI, 10 Ethereum to the pool. Compare this to being a holder. So if I'm not a liquidity provider, maybe I also just hold 1,000 DAI and 10 Ethereum. And then we see what happened next. Okay. So because crypto is so volatile, Ethereum price go up a lot. So the price of Ethereum, let's say, increased by 10%. So this creates an arbitrage opportunity. And then an arbitrager can now buy Ethereum from the AMM starting at a price that is 10% cheaper than external market. Because all the DeFi protocols, of course, there will be traders, uh, people looking to arbitrage, right? So initially, right, when Ethereum price rise to uh, rise 10%, there will be an arbitrage opportunity. So an arbitrager will help to balance the protocol, right? Balance the pool. Because now you have this opportunity here to buy Ethereum lower than the spot price. And then what will happen next? Third point, arbitrages are incentivized to balance the AMM by selling DAI for Ethereum, meaning they want to buy Ethereum because it is cheaper than outside. With this, they will help to balance the AMM. And then with this result, liquidity provider actually will suffer a loss of $2.38 compared to holding Ethereum and DAI. So here's just an example of how, right, Actually, sometimes if you hold your token, it is better than being a liquidity provider. Because you see, in this example, if Ethereum suddenly rise a lot, some arbitrager will help to balance the pool. And then when the pool is balanced already, you can see the difference. As a liquidity provider, because the pool is constantly trying to balance themselves, I may end up with fewer tokens a fewer USD equivalent of token as compared to if I hold it. So this is what we mean by impermanent loss. It means that the, for the pair that you contribute, if one of the pair, the price, keep going up or keep going down, meaning that the seesaw is not balanced, there will be some balancing going on. And this may actually result in you having less capital as you put in before, which is why we say, right, being a yield farmer, being a liquidity provider, it's not always 100% profitable. So you really need to um, weigh the cost and the benefit. So I have a question for everyone here. With this, right, what kind of uh, pool or what kind of trading pair do you think it would be good to be a liquidity provider for to prevent impermanent loss? Stable. Very good. Yeah, so Johnny, you are right. So... Um, it is right. So stable pool, meaning stable pair, it is good because their price, they won't go so much right up and down. So if you are a liquidity provider for stable pool, meaning two stable token, let's say USD, Tether and DAI, then you wouldn't be so scared about impermanent loss because the value of the stable tokens, they won't fluctuate a lot. So net, you will ultimately still profit the most from yield farming and from the trading fee. So if you are especially a beginner, but you really want to try yield farming, right? I would highly recommend you to contribute to a stable token pool to prevent impermanent loss. Unless you are a degen, you want to try out all the random pool, right? Feel free to do so because you may lose out by impermanent loss like this. Okay, so, so 
Mm -hmm. So YH, because actually when you start talking about scale, uh, the concept of a scale is already, it has to be balanced already. Yes. But by that concept, you have to look for stability already. You cannot yes. try and do all this unless you're a sniper. Then you, as an arbitrager, you will, you will be spying on all these kind of opportunities, waiting to, to snipe a shot to, to do arbitrage. Um, actually, you are partially right, Johnny. So why, right, why some people actually still contribute to this pool is because if you look at impermanent loss, why is it called impermanent? Because this loss will not be permanent unless you realize it, unless you take out your liquidity. And why there is maybe a probably possibility of you gaining back, it's because like a skill, if I contribute to Ethereum and Bitcoin seesaw, right, the skill, if Ethereum goes up, of course, I have less Ethereum, I have more Bitcoin. But because these two assets are so volatile, they will keep like that, right? They will keep fluctuating, sometimes up, sometimes down. So if you don't actually withdraw your liquidity, if you're planning to hold your liquidity token long-term, you may actually unrealize some of the loss because these two assets, they will keep fluctuating and the seesaw when it's fluctuating, it means that people are also trading. So you're also getting trading fee. So it also depends on the token you choose to provide liquidity. If you choose two token, one is like cannot make it token then the other token keep going up. Then of course, your impermanent loss will be permanent. But if you choose two, for example, I like to put in Bitcoin and Ethereum um, liquidity pair because I'm bullish on both. So I don't mind getting more of one or each. Yeah, so it still depends on what you choose as a liquidity pool token. But the concept yeah. of liquidity pools uh, holders mm. are actually is like the, the mm. zengke, you know. So actually... Technically, this Zengke should be more rewarded in that sense, right? Yes. So as a liquidity provider, you get yield, you get the project token, and you also get trading fee. Yes, but which is why I also want to highlight impermanent loss is very real. So there is still a risk of being a liquidity provider. But best practice, if you are uh, planning to be a liquidity provider, it is good to put longer because... If you put longer, it means that you get more trading fee, assuming that more uh, a lot of people trade. So it may actually help to um, reduce the impermanent loss. When you say longer, can you define in the time period? Is it like one month, three months, six months, one year? Um, I would say for crypto and DeFi, right? Uh, long term is very short. I would say um, two weeks, one month can be considered long term. Yeah, unless you're looking at very established protocol, then you can keep longer, like Uniswap. Yes, but if you're um, contributing to new projects, right, you really, need, you really need to keep monitoring because projects may have updates, there may be exploit, and your yield farm, right, you cannot just live for one month without looking at the company, without looking at what the project is doing. So you need to constantly be on Twitter, Discord, to see what is the project doing. All right, so later on, I will share a link to this presentation. So after that, if you want to learn more about impermanent loss, right, the link provided here is very good. So I got the image from uh, Bancor.network, which is a very good DeFi protocol as well. So you can check it out if you're keen. To summarize impermanent loss, I wanted to show you this because sometimes, right, it's better to don't do so much. Don't be, uh, don't be like, Ganjong spider, you want to earn a lot, right? So you try all the random DeFi thing. Because sometimes it's really better for you to just hold your crypto asset. So here's an example. If you actually provide liquidity to this liquidity pool of LINK and Ethereum, compared to just holding LINK, which is a crypto token, you can actually, you will actually earn more just by holding LINK than contributing to the LINK Ethereum AMM pool. Because link rise up a lot. So because of that, there is impermanent loss. And if you contribute to this AMM, you actually lose more than 50% as compared to you just holding link. So to summarize again, if you are really new at crypto, I highly encourage you to go and read more about DeFi. Don't jump in yet because sometimes the best thing to do is to hold. And this is also same for those considering trading. Because trading crypto is very exciting. You can trade like 100 times, 20 times. Then you think like you want to make quick money, right? But the fact is sometimes if you just hold, you can earn more. And this is speaking from personal experience because I also try like trading 100x. Wow, I get liquidated so fast. 
And sometimes if I didn't trade, I think I will have more as compared to if I trade. And here's a very important question. Who should be yield farmers? Firstly, I would say if you are not 100% new to crypto, you already own crypto, you are familiar with trading, you use Binance a lot, you use like Celsius network, you try out staking, or maybe you even stake for uh, blockchain projects like Polkadot, Zilliqa. So you're already familiar with the market, then you can consider to be a yield farmer. The second point is you are already familiar or comfortable with using um, blockchain explorer, interact, uh, uh, how to say, interactor like MetaMask. So MetaMask, right, it is like a Web 3.0 extension that enables you to quickly interact with blockchain, quickly send transactions. To be a yield farmer, you need to set this up. Uh, some of you may not actually need MetaMask. You can actually use Trust Wallet or other wallet for other blockchain projects that you're looking to yield farm for. And as a yield farmer, because now we have so many different blockchain, not just Ethereum, you need to be comfortable in knowing how to change the network as well because different blockchain, they exist on different network. So if you are yield farming on Ethereum, you need to be on the Ethereum network. If you are yield farming on Binance, uh, Binance Smart Chain, you need to be on the BSC network. If you are yield farming on, let's say, Luna, the Terra network or something, then you need to have the Terra Blockchain Explorer. The third point is best practice to have at least 500 to start with and experiment with yield farming because you can start with fewer amount now, especially that we have Binance Smart Chain, which is really way cheaper and quicker than Ethereum. So technically, if you want, you can start with $100 but it will not be so worth it because you wouldn't see a lot of rewards, uh, significant income trickling in. Uh, fourth point, you are an active crypto user because yield farming is not just um, leave and go. Unless you are looking at established protocol, unless you are just looking at a very stable yield farm, then you can um, just leave it and uh, just let it be like Uniswap. Let's say you be a new Uniswap provide, liquidity provider, although they don't really give good yield, you just earn a trading fee now. But you can just leave it for long because you know that in the long term, you will earn quite a lot from the trading fee. But if you are looking to yield farm at new projects, you need to monitor. This is important. You cannot just leave it like for one month without looking. You need to monitor because the APY can instantly or like in one day, it can change from 1,000 to 200. So you need to monitor yield farming, especially if you are um, doing it at new projects. And last but not least, you are aware of all the risk of being a liquidity provider. So some of the common risks that I shared just now is, the first one is impermanent loss. The second one is, of course, security. When projects rug pull, when there are bugs in the smart contract, you can have the possibility of losing 100% of your fund. So high risk, high reward. So for example, here you can see random project, you need to monitor because sometimes they will have announcement like this. If you're a liquidity provider for BTC ST liquidity pair, please be advised to remove your liquidity by 4 p.m. tomorrow because they are doing some upgrade. And if you don't, you will incur high in permanent loss. So the fact is that projects, they are constantly updating. They maybe need to change this, change that. Sometimes they will give announcement and you as a liquidity provider, you need to be aware of this. If not, right, your funds may have some problems. And here are some of the trends that we see with yield farming as well. We see a lot of projects and yield farms launching or migrating to Binance Smart Chain from Ethereum. And one of it is, um, the thing is very much about the lower fee. So personally, me as well, because uh, I used to use Ethereum a lot. I use Ethereum for DeFi. And then I just tried Binance Smart Chain for fun. And I didn't really like it because a lot of people 
similar to me, that we will think that, oh, Ethereum is about decentralization, it's about um, real blockchain, we are really participating in DeFi, and then Binance Smart Chain, because it is related to Binance, which is the world's largest cryptocurrency. We will say, this is fake DeFi because it's centralized, blah, blah, blah. But the fact is that after you try Binance Smart Chain, and then you can really see how it's really enabling like normal people like us to participate in DeFi. One reason is because now you want to be a yield farmer, you want to provide liquidity, it's way cheaper. Maybe if you put in $500, you only need to pay 50 cents in the fee compared to Ethereum. You put in $500, maybe you need to pay 120 in fees. Okay, so of course, there are still benefits and disadvantages, but Binance Smart Chain actually make things very simple for beginners like us to try out DeFi. And the next point is that there has also been a spike in interest in non-fungible tokens. So non-fungible tokens are like unique tokens uh, made for artwork and a lot of things and gaming. So this one, I think we will probably share it next month if a lot of you vote for it. So a lot of spike in project as well, NFT projects that um, distribute their tokens if you stick in the protocol, meaning like let's say you stick Ethereum, they give you the NFT. Another way is airdrop, meaning that if you hold like BND in your wallet, some of the projects may actually just give you free token because you hold another token. So there are different ways of earning in crypto as well, staking and airdrop. Airdrop, you don't need to do anything. You need to maybe uh, have prior interaction with a protocol or you need to hold a certain token. So because today we only have one hour, I wouldn't go very much into detail, but if you would like to learn more, feel free to vote for our next session on, let's say, staking, NFT, airdrop, and then we can share more as well. Here are some of the best practice that you uh, should be aware of when you do yield farming. So the first is, please make sure you do due diligence on the project. So you can see like Twitter audits. Has the project passed audits? Audits meaning, right, there are actually audits firm in crypto that they are actually created, right, to check the smart contract code, to check the protocol code, to see whether there are any loophole in security. So you can check whether they have passed any audits. And then you, one way to check, right, is also you can see whether the protocol was a fork of existing protocol. Fork meaning like they copy paste, all right? And for fork protocol, right, generally it is safer. And why we say so is because the code has already been audited, has been seen by a lot of developers already. So if a project is like, let's say, forked from Sushi, forked from uh, Yum Finance, you would know that, okay, the project is quite safe, but you also need to think, do you want to even contribute to this project? Because it is just a copy paste project. It is a bucket shop. And the second point is for beginners, please maybe stick to stable token pool to prevent impermanent loss. Unless you just want to try, you just want to play, you don't mind losing the amount, then feel free to participate in more risky pool. And last but not least, here's where I will share more about pool two. So pool two APY may be the most attractive but they are also the most risky. And pool two, what we mean by pool two is, it refers to the um, project token versus Ethereum versus BNB. So for this pair, right, the project token versus Ethereum, normally they will offer higher APY as compared to if you contribute to other pool. Why is it so? Is because they want people to buy their token to contribute liquidity in this. The risk here is, however, higher because, as you know, farm tokens, a lot of them is like Ponzi scheme. The farm token, the new project token, may be worth $100 at launch. But in three days later, the whales may sell, and this $100 worth of token right, may become $0.50. Cents. So the fact is that you can contribute to this risky pool, you can earn more of their token. But if their token price eventually go down, right, you earn more also no use because the tokens are like banana money is like literally worthless. So this is where you need to see the risk as well. Higher APY doesn't necessarily means better because you are contributing to the more risky pool.
So to highlight again, participating in DeFi, we have very, very high risk, but also very, very high reward. As you can see from traditional finance, we earn 3%. We used to think it's good. But now in crypto, you can earn at least 15%. But high risk, sorry, high rewards come high risk. And I would say nothing in DeFi is 100% safe, even if it has been audited. Because there has been examples of projects, they have already been audited by security firms, but they still got compromised in some way. So for example, uh, some examples here, Yum Finance, they have some bug previously, rebasing bug, uh, make their supply go like super high. So um, there was some issue with it as well. And Yum Finance, actually, a lot of people trusted in it previously because a lot of popular influencer funds, they play as well. And then Pancake Swap. I think some of you mentioned as well in our Telegram. So recently, Pancake Swap, right, and Cream Finance, they have been hijacked. So maybe they are not hacked, but their website has been hijacked. And if you go to their website when it was compromised, they will ask you to enter your seed phrase. And this is where the hijacker will get your money because your seed phrase is like your password. Whoever gets your seed phrase assess your, gets access to your account. So here I want to highlight that um, no protocol um, nobody should ever ask for your seed phrase. You should keep this seed phrase 100% to yourself. Okay, so even if a protocol that you use asks for seed phrase, right, don't give it yet. You need to go and check what is going on because no legit protocol or project will ask for your seed phrase. And then you can see another example here, SYN exit scam sold at a big loss. Um, DeFi is a minefield. I think this sums up DeFi. There is a lot of opportunities because it is so new. It's like a new financial revolution and innovation. We can play with money. We can explore different kinds of money, like rebase money, um, locked liquidity money, and a lot of things. Very fun. You can go and read more about it. But the fact is that because it's so new, it is also very, very risky. And whatever you put in, you risk losing 100%. So if you're someone with very, very low risk appetite, you shouldn't even touch DeFi. All right. And here's where to start. If you are entirely new to crypto, you don't even own cryptocurrency, do not try DeFi yet. Please feel free to just experiment with exchange products. Although we say, oh, it's bad, it's centralized, but it's very good for beginners because although they are centralized, they are safer. Uh, some of them, the more established ones, they are safer. And like I shared just now, right, the, the slide about DBS and the um, Crypto.com yield, it is simple to start and they already offer very, very good rates, way better than traditional finance. So if you want to start, just try out Binance staking first, try out Binance um, staking products because it is very good place for beginners. And then next step, if you are keen to try out DeFi and you don't mind the possibility of losing 100% of your capital, then very good, you are at the right place as well. So you can go and read, learn more about DeFi through Twitter, following all the projects, following influencers, uh, significant VCs in this industry. You can follow the project on Discord. Discord is like a gaming chat community that a lot of projects use as well. And then you can also follow them on all the social media like Telegram, Bitcoin Talk, Reddit. And for new users, right, I would recommend you to start with Binance Smart Chain projects instead of Ethereum. Because although Ethereum is like a real blockchain, right, people say it's uh, more decentralized, but the fact is that right now, if you want to yield farm as a beginner, you will lose a lot on, in fees, especially because Ethereum is still in um, development to Ethereum 2.0. They are still upgrading, not yet done, but when... Ethereum successfully upgrade to Ethereum 2.0, maybe we will see lesser fee. But for now, please try out Binance Smart Chain because it is way cheaper. So anyone, like a lot of us here are beginners, we can easily try it first. And if you are an experienced DeFi degen, uh, you shouldn't even be here. Uh, you can just continue doing what you are doing because you already know more than what I know. It's DeFi degen. All right, what is DeFi DGEN? Anyone, any DGENs here you want to share? I'm pretty sure there are some here. So, is H a DeFi DGEN? Because you say, oi. 
Okay, basically, right, it's just a term because um, the DeFi community are all quite young people, like uh, 20, 30, 40 ish, and mostly guys. So they joke a lot. So uh, the DeFi degenerate is just a term to describe like someone that really put in quite a lot of money in crypto. They don't mind gambling. They don't mind just trying out different protocol that has very high yield. And why we call them degen is because it's very risky. There is a risk of losing all their fun, but also a risk of them getting very rich. So it's more of like, like something like a gaming term is called DeFi degenerate. Yeah. And thanks Mark for the glossary as well. All right, so now, right, um, uh, thank you so much for um, staying with me all the way. I know I talked quite a lot today until it's like almost one hour, but I think we just end off just nice. So what will happen now is that we will do a lottery where we will give someone here that put in their Ethereum wallet 20 USD worth of Ethereum. And then after that, we will have a QA. You can ask any questions. And then uh, we will do the bonus section whereby we will do a demo of contributing to a liquidity pool via pancake swap. All right, so this is what we'll do. So now let's do the lottery. And while I set things up, right, let me just play some music so you're not bored. But feel free to continue asking in the chat. Um, Sean will help to share more as well. So just to share, Sean uh, also part of Block School and we, are, we used to work in Huopi together. So uh, Huopi is a cryptocurrency exchange. So actually our team, we do have crypto experience. We are not teaching crypto when we don't know anything. So we uh, also trade, also play with DeFi. So just to share a bit about ourselves. Okay, so now lottery. Let me play some music so not so boring. <laughs> How many people do you all need to, add, to get a class started? Because I'm very keen on the hands-on. Wonderful. So I think, uh, let me off the music first, very noisy. I think um, minimum 15, then we will start. Okay, so what you can do is, right, if you're very keen for the hands-on class, right, it will be similar to this, but of course, more specific, more dedicated with notes as well. We will go through one by one. Uh, please go to our website, theblockschool.com. Uh, you click on the course that you want to attend. If it's the private course, please fill in the course, uh, fill in a Google document. And in the additional comment, right, you just say, potentially you have six friend kin to join, for example, like this. So we can gouge the demand. And with this, once we see like we have really quite a lot of demand, we can quickly roll out a session. Okay, so thank you, Johnny, for uh, checking as well. It's, so, it's, a, it's a physical class, right? Not, not Zoom kind of thing, right? I think um depends. So I will also ask like the people who won, right? Do you want a physical set sharing or a Zoom? If majority of you vote physical, then we will do physical. But with COVID-19, I'm not too sure of the restriction as well. But if you're looking at more like how to say private session, we can also do. So this is considered customized causes. So for example, um, actually we do one-on-one -on -one sharing as well. One-on-one -on -one helping to set up ledger like helping to set up ledger and helping to stick in blockchain protocols. So if you're more interested in customized private causes or consultancy, feel free to let me know as well. Okay, so let me go back to lottery because I think a lot of you are here for that. So here are the lottery names and then what I will do, right, I will put them into the random name picker. So some of you here, you see, right, there is more than one entry and that is because you have referred your friend. So continue, please continue to do so for our future session because for every referral that you give, right, you have one additional chance. Okay, so for example, Lisa, Lisa, a very big supporter of us as well. So you see she has like 11 chances and Han Ling as well. Alamak, I don't see my name inside. No chance already. <laughs> Johnny, do you put your, your name? Let me see. Oh, you're here. There's Johnny Lee. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this one, right? Uh, for some of you join us today, you don't know what's going on. Uh, our sign up form, right? There is a portion where you can put your Ethereum address. So you can put it in to participate in our lottery. And the more friends you invite, the more chances you have. 
So those that didn't put in this session, don't worry because we will do this every month. So you can have a chance of earning 20 USD worth of Ethereum every month as well. Okay, so I copy paste already. Where is it? Let me see. I don't really see it, so let me refresh. Okay, so here are the uh, names. So now what we'll do is we'll just pick the winner. And if you're here, you have three seconds to unmute yourself and just say me. If not, we will skip and then we will pick our next one. Okay, so let's pick. Is Heng Chuan here? <laughs> 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Yeah, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Heng Chuan. Okay, Heng Chuan is not here. Next. Sure, okay. Suspense, drum roll. No, 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 no. Elton Fu. Are you yes, here? here? Hi. Is it real Elton? Let me check first. <laughs> How do you check? <laughs> All right, very good. So Elton, you are here. So Elton, before I transfer you the token, can you verify if this is the right address? Uh, yes, it is. All right, so this is also a best practice before you send crypto. Please verify. Please make sure it's the right one. Because crypto transactions are one way. Once you send, no re reversal, okay? So this is a best practice as well. So what I will do now is congrats, Elton. So you are a proud winner of 20 USD worth of Ethereum, which may become more in the future. Like, I think previously we sent Shushi Ethereum out, and I think the $20 already become $50. So congrats. And now I will send the Ethereum via Ethereum network because most of us use that, although it's more expensive, but um, this is fine. Okay. So for example, you can see my MetaMask here. Right now I'm in Binance Smart Chain, meaning that in my MetaMask, I am not in the Ethereum network. So what I need to do is I need to switch my network into Ethereum mainnet. And then you can see this is my Ethereum um, address and then I can click send because I already copy paste Elton's address, right? Which is 0x734. Then I can directly send this Ethereum to Elton and this will be directly sent via the blockchain, not via a middleman, not via an exchange. So this is uh, the purpose of MetaMask as well to enable you to send cryptocurrency to one another yourself via the blockchain, not through Binance, not through Huobi, not through Coinbase. So $20 worth of Ethereum, how much is it? 0 0.01. Okay, so 0 0.012. And then here you can see the transaction fee. You can actually choose how much you want because the higher transaction fee you pay, the faster it gets through. And for the purpose of this sharing, because we are live, right? Let me go average, although I want to go fast because fast is $31. And as you can see, we are just transferring $20 worth of Ethereum. And the gas fee could be double, meaning uh, equivalent to the transaction amount, which is why we say that if you want to try yield farming, uh, use Binance Smart Chain to start. Don't use Ethereum because the fees are crazy right now. And if I choose average, I pay $11 just to send $21, which is not very worth it, but I will still send it because this uh, for the demo for this sharing. And then here you can see, you can confirm it. They will say gas fee is how much in total, how much will be sent. So in total, I'm sending uh, $33, but Elton will only receive $20 because $10 is in fees, which is very, very bad. Okay, so once I click send, then you can see that the transaction has been sent. And what you can do is, you can actually view on Etherscan. Etherscan is the Ethereum blockchain explorer that enables you to uh, view all Ethereum transactions. So you can click on it. So you can see, because it is not the super fast transaction, so it needs some time around 45 seconds. 
Okay, so while we wait for it to be confirmed, right, now we will do our QA. If you have any questions, feel free to type in a group chat and feel free to unmute yourself as well. Okay. What, what is the best U for staple token? The in best your experience. The best U for stable token. Um, right now it is 20% because just recently there is this protocol called Anchor Protocol that just uh, that just actually run and they actually provide 20% for stable token. Let me just quickly show you. But how you actually see what is the best yield for stable token, right? There are a lot of comparison websites that actually help to share what is the highest yield. So this one we can share later as well so you can have a look. But for some for this protocol, right, it just launched yesterday actually. And you can see this is uh, UST, which is their stable token. And the interest is actually 22.57%. And their unique selling point is that they say that their yield will be stable, meaning at least 20%. So this is something you can look at as well. All right, but UST before we move, uh, UST, US, US Tether, right? Uh, no, this is their, uh, this is Anchor Protocol U, uh, stable token. So this is US Terra, which is equivalent okay. to US dollar. So different protocol, they have their own different stable token. And this is just an example. But if you want to be safer, right? Of course, better to earn interest for USD Tether or DAI or USDC because they are the more well-known stable tokens. Okay, but before we move on, I just want to share that congrats, Elton, the transaction has gone through. So this is successful. So if you check your wallet, right, your Maita wallet, you should have seen that you have received 0 0.012 ETH. Okay, so congrats, Elton. And for those of you um, very keen to earn your like first crypto, right, just continue joining our session. You refer as many friends as possible for higher chance. Okay, and last but not least, before we really uh, do more Q&A for those of you that don't mind to stay back, let me just also introduce one of our friends here, Mrs. Lilek. So Mrs. Lilek, right, uh, very interesting. We met in the blockchain course, but she's also a YouTube, how to say, crypto influencer, and she shared about crypto as well. So let's uh, just uh, give her some time to intro herself because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are also interested to learn more about crypto and maybe you can learn more about crypto through her channel as well. So Mrs. Lilek. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, most of us are here are Singaporean, so good evening everyone. Uh, shout out to like the 12 or so people that I, I brought into this session. So YH, um, she runs this school called the Block School in Singapore, and I, I thought that was really cool. Uh, she teaches like five different classes on uh, introduction to blockchain for like corporate compliance, cross-border payment, and um, now she also has like intro to DeFi and other classes. So I thought it was really cool. Um, for myself, I have a YouTube channel. So I run this channel called Mrs. Lilac. Uh, I make videos on crypto reviews. I do tutorials as well, Binance, um, CFI, DeFi. And my best performing video to date is actually the MetaMask video. It's, uh, it has almost close to 13,000 views already. And my takeaway from that video is a lot of people are looking for uh, dApps, DeFi, uh, uh, DeFi applications, uh, NFT. So if you want to get into the NFT game, you need to know what MetaMask is. And um, yeah, just, just go ahead and, and watch the videos if, you, if you're a complete beginner. Um, I also make videos um, on other platforms as well. So I'm, I'm always happy to meet other women in crypto. So when I, I, I found YH, I was, I was quite happy. Um, it is uh, uh, you know, a very male dominated space. Uh, there's not a lot of women, but when we find each other, it's always a, a nice union. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so support Mrs. Lilek, follow her YouTube. You. Yeah. yeah. Nice hair as well. <laughs> Matches <laughs> your name. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like All right. So uh, thank you. So just wanted to quickly intro Mrs. Lilek because she's also sharing on a crypto space, which is very interesting as well. So now back to our QA. And before, okay, before we go into our QA, just to introduce, we also have Sean and Dennis here with us, uh, also part of the Blob School. Uh, 
they do training as well for blockchain. I think a lot of you here saw Dennis in the classes as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot away because now we have more people to help to answer them. I, th I think actually the, the skill set progression is really about um, first, how do you set up your wallets? Subsequently, by how do you buy your, your first crypto to minimize your fees? Because I, I, I mean, a lot of things is all read and then eventually you need to try and experiment. Uh, and that, the experiment part is actually where the possibility of losing money is uh, because of pressing all these wrong buttons. And after when you can do that, you start to do the staking, then eventually go to higher levels like DeFi. Something like that. Yes, which is why like, it's quite tough for like newbies right, to really get on board because there's so much you need to learn, you need to set up. So for those of you really keen, right, for our causes, um, what I will show you is I'll show you our website. And here you can see Crypto Starter Pack. So this course, right, it is for beginners. And what we will actually do in this course, we will actually walk you through step by step um, how you can register a crypto account, how you can buy your first crypto, um, what is happening in Singapore, um, how you can trade crypto, how you can stake, how you can do DeFi. So it's a introductory course. And how we're going to do this is that this is currently not a funded course, meaning that uh, we are not doing this in conjunction with NTUC, like our other courses. So these are private. But private courses, the good thing is that it is more flexible, meaning that we, are, we, we don't have any restriction on what we can or cannot share. And how we run the course ultimately depends on you meaning that if you are really keen you can get a group of friends and then we can just do a private sharing yes so if you are keen right you can go to our website you register in the comment section you tell me what you want uh, how many friends for example and then we can see whether we can offer this just for you and your friend if the terms are right and after crypto starter pack right we also have one called DeFi monetizing your liquidity this is for people who really want to know about DeFi. You can join this course and it will be more of a deep dive. We, then we can try out yield farming on Binance Smart Chain. We can try out yield farming on Ethereum as well. So these are the two private courses that you can register for if you really, really need hands-on help. And just to share a bit about the fees, we have not decided yet. Yeah, but I would say it will be from maybe uh, per pax 50 to 200 depending on the class size. So let's say right, you have what, a whole group of friends. So if there is higher packs, then each uh, packs maybe will be lower because we have more people to share to. So the cost is lower. So it really depends. Okay, so any other questions, feel free to type in a group chat. If not, right, I also want to share, later we will share this link, uh, this PowerPoint slide. And then the last slide, right, we have links. For example, you want to know how to set up MetaMask, how to add Binance Smart Chain, where you can compare the yield. You can go to all these websites. So these are some of the links that you can go and click later on. And we will share this in our Telegram chat after this. Okay, so for some of you here, not yet on our Telegram, please join because this is our main form of communications. Like whatever we will share there, the new topic for next month, we will also share that. I mean, we will get you to vote, but we will share all the updates there as well. Okay, so back to QA. So if uh, you have any questions, feel free to type in a group chat or unmute yourself. Currently on hand, how many people do you have on your waiting list already for the hands-on course? Actually, we do have a lot of interest, but one thing I just want to share is that uh, we are not sure, so sure how, how we should package the course, meaning that how much we should charge per pax to make it affordable yet worthwhile as well. Yes, because um, for example, for our current mm -hmm. blockchain courses, it is 95% subsidized. So to attend, you just need to pay $30. But the fact is that for private courses, we may potentially charge um, more because we also need to cover our costs, like manpower, our the time taken to conduct the course. So it depends on ultimately the class size. But some people 
may want lower packs, we can do that, but it will be higher per packs because lower packs means that we can really give you more attention. Yeah, so it really depends. Actually, it's not really that, I don't see that much of an uh, issue like, because actually all you need to do is just send send the, the Google form and ask people what is it that they want, right? Yep, so actually the Google form is available on the website, so feel free to go and um, fill up there and then we will get back to you then. Yeah, already done already. already. Okay, thank Today you, I've already, I finished my third <laughs> NTUC course already, I finished it already. Really? Do you attend all the blockchain courses? All, all the, all, all, all by NTUC, all cleared already. Oh, wonderful. So thank you so much for the support as well. I can see you are very like super keen learner of crypto, which is good. All right, so KW has a question. You mean we can use SkillsFuture credit for blockchain costs? Is it a virtual cost? Yes, so for the three blockchain costs on our website, you can use SkillsFuture. So after 95% subsidy, it is $30. And you can use the SkillsFuture to um, pay for it. So essentially it's free. It's just that we understand that a lot of you actually, you interested to learn how to make money in crypto, what is how to use crypto, which we, we don't cover in our blockchain courses because our blockchain courses is really on the technology. So for those of you keen on that, you can register your interest for our private courses. And then Maki, what's your view on Alice in Binance yield farming? So for, for, for me personally, I just see Alice suddenly pop up in Binance as one of the top gainers. Then I went to their website, I see that they are an NFT game. Uh, look interesting, but I personally feel it's overhyped because it's NFT and they don't really show a working product yet. I can't play their game. It's just their token, so I can't judge. But for me, I just think it's overhyped. And then Maki, when is your next NFT course? So because we do run free session, free sharing, and every month we will run one. So if you're really interested to learn more about NFT, right? what you can do is you look up on our Telegram chat. We will post a registration form and then you can vote for NFT to be the next topic. And if you want to dive deeper, potentially we can also offer a course on this. And oh, I suddenly thought of it as well. Um, next week, I think next Wednesday or Tuesday in the morning, Dennis will be sharing on blockchain. He will do an introduction on blockchain class and that's free as well as part of Smart Nation initiative with NTUC. So if you're keen, you can also sign up uh, to learn more about blockchain, especially for those of you that have yet to attend our, any of our sharing sessions, any of our blockchain courses, and you are interested to learn more before you actually sign up for the NTUC courses. Okay. And then Maki, will Mrs. Lilac join your school? I think, of course, there are potential opportunities for us to collaborate. And if there are good opportunities as well, we can expand our team and we can have more people, the more the merrier, because we all just want to share about crypto, about blockchain. The next one, what is the difference three causes at the NTUC Learning Hub? The, three, the difference between the causes is in the name. So you can see blockchain for capital markets. The course will be on how blockchain will enable will benefit the capital markets. The next course, blockchain for corporate compliance. It will be on how blockchain can enable, enable corporate compliance, can make it better. But of course, all these causes, right, because we do have the beginner in mind, meaning that you can attend if you have zero knowledge. So especially for the front part, there will be some overlap because we will introduce blockchain. But this will be a good time for you to solidify your knowledge to learn more so it's not a bad thing per se as well do you have any lobang to get a free nft free nft yeah just no need to be very pretty pictures just to get a slice of uh, history this one, you need to monitor Twitter websites already. And actually, right, we, we tried to mint a block chats NFT just to distribute to everyone here because since you already have the Ethereum address. But we didn't because of the Ethereum fee. When you mint it, you need to pay. But right, right now, there are other blockchain like Matic, Polygon. So 
potentially what we can do is we can distribute an NFT to you, everyone here, because we have your address. Oh, yeah, your address, and then we can distribute, but the NFT will be worthless unless there is demand and supply for it. But if you're looking at NFT that you really want to hold, you can really um, monitor the market, go to Twitter, follow all the NFT account because they they do some airdrops. Yeah, and then you can actually participate as well. All right, any other questions? All right, so if no other question, right, um, then we, we don't want to keep you any longer because we are already overextended already by 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, so I will do the demo. So before I do the demo, right, since we have no other question, thank you so much, everyone here for joining us today. So you can we can keep in touch via Telegram, our Telegram group if you have not joined it yet. And for the next sharing next month, right, uh, we will send you a link and then we will get you to vote. So you will vote for the next topic next month, which can be NFT if you vote for NFT. So see you guys all in the Telegram chat and feel free to contribute, feel free to share more because ultimately we are just trying to build a Singapore community on cryptocurrency. So for the rest of you that you need to do something else, you want to end the session now, uh, feel free to do so because uh, we have officially ended our session. And what I will do now is I will quickly demo how to provide liquidity into Pancake Swap for um, the rest of you who are interested to learn more and don't mind to stay back. So thank you so much to everyone here for joining us today. For those that want to leave, feel free to do so. And now we will share our demo. And later on, after we end the session, I will share a link to this PowerPoint for those of you that want it because we do have some relevant links here that you can refer to. Okay, so now let me do a demo. So let me just quickly set up my screen. Okay, so I have a scenario prepared at the right side if you see my screen. So the scenario is that Okay, now I want to be a liquidity provider in pancake swap for this pair cake slash BNB. And then what I need to do is first, I need to ensure I have a MetaMask. Okay, my MetaMask is set up and I have my network pointed to Binance Smart Chain. Because just now when I send Ethereum, when I send Ethereum, it was the Ethereum network. So I need to set my network up. And how you set it up is uh, there are some guides that you can refer to at the last page of the PowerPoint, which I will send later. Okay, so what I need to do is first, I change my network from Ethereum to Smart Chain because now I'm going to yield farm in Binance Smart Chain. So I click Smart Chain. And here you can see the difference. In Binance Smart Chain, the main cryptocurrency is BNB, which I will use for transaction fees as well. Okay, so now my MetaMask, I see already, it is on Binance Smart Chain. And what I'll do next is, I will go to Binance.com to buy my crypto in order to transfer it to my Binance Smart Chain wallet to yield farm. Okay, for some of you here, uh, you can buy um, crypto at binance.com or binance.sg. If you buy from binance.sg, you need to transfer it to binance.com in order to buy BNB and cake later. Okay. So in order to buy, right, you can go buy with credit or debit card or peer-to-peer -peer trading. And assuming I already bought maybe uh, USD data, 
the next step I need to do is I need to convert this USD tether into cake and BNB because I'm going to yield farm for this pair. So I will go to Classic, Binance Classic, which is the trading interface. And here, what I will do is I will find, um, let's see. I will find cake because I want to provide cake as a liquidity, as a liquidity token. So I need to buy cake with USDT. So assuming I buy already, okay. And then next I need to buy BNB. And I buy BNB. Alternatively, you don't need to buy two. You can just buy one, you transfer it to your Binance Smart Chain wallet, and then you convert it then. So it depends on your preference. So let's say I just buy BNB since BNB is the main fuel for Binance Smart Chain. So I can just buy, okay, assuming I buy already, what I will need to do is I will need to go to my Binance wallet. I will need to withdraw my BNB to my Binance Smart Chain wallet in my MetaMask. Okay, and how I withdraw is when I'm in my MetaMask account, I will copy my address. Copy, I click withdraw. So when I withdraw, I click on crypto. I need to find BNB. So I click BNB. And assuming I copy paste my recipient address already, okay? So it is this one. I need to choose my network and your network is Binance Smart Chain. So take note that Binance have two network. One is called Binance Chain and Binance Smart Chain. So Binance Smart Chain is like a wallet uh, more for DeFi, sorry, a blockchain more for DeFi products. It is faster, it has smart contract capability, it is compatible with EVM, the Ethereum virtual something. Yeah. So you click on Binance Smart Chain and then you withdraw it, withdraw your Binance token. For example, I withdraw 2000, then I'll submit. So this is how you actually transfer to your MetaMask wallet at first. Because when you initially buy your token, it is on your Binance custodian wallet. It is not on your on-chain Binance wallet, meaning on the blockchain, Binance Smart Chain. So if you're a first timer, you need to first buy crypto, convert to BNB, transfer the BNB to your Binance Smart Chain wallet, like here. Okay, so assuming I already transfer, it's transfer ready, now I can do my staking. So how I do my uh, liquidity providing is I can go to pancake swap. Um, pancake swap it is one of the more popular Binance Smart Chain project. So if you want to try out yield farming, right, you can use pancake swap for beginners. For people who are more experienced, you can use other projects, although they are a bit more risky because they are less well known, they are newer as well. But their yield are higher. So once you're at pancake swap, you can click on this settings button. You can click on, let's say, let me just explore some farms. And here you can see the farms available for you to stake liquidity pool to earn tokens, to earn their project token, which is cake. Is it cake? Yeah, I think they have another token as well. So here you can see cake, BNB, Dusk, BNB, Beefy, BNB. And you can see the APR here. 99%, 600%. And you see, even though this is so high, maybe you shouldn't do it. And this is because 
it is another obscure token called Dusk. So you need to stake Dusk with BNB. And in the event that Dusk price goes down a lot, you will have impermanent loss. So this is a way for them to incentivize people to contribute to the liquidity pool because it is it has high APR. So in this example, I want to uh, put in liquidity tokens, uh, contribute to the cake BNB liquidity pool. What I will need to do is I need to contribute the LP token. So I need to click on this, get cake BNB LP. I thought before you click, you have to check the contract first, right? To read or something, right? Yes, but the fact is that we can only check the contract number, but if we are not software developer, we check the contract, we also don't know what it is talking about. Yes, so depends. If, of course, you are a software developer, you know how to audit uh, contracts, then it's even better because you actually know the protocol, uh, whether it is working, whether there are bugs. No, I, I'm looking from a layman point of view because we can say view contracts written in English. Okay, so let's say I right, view contract, we can click view also, then we see what we see, okay? So this is what we see. This is the um, pancake BNB contract. And here you can see the amount of tokens contributed to the liquidity pool. So right now there is like 23959135cake and 908rep BNB. So this is the contract. And you can actually zoom in to see more, but we wouldn't understand because these are more like, okay, for example, this, this is the smart contract. I don't understand anything because I am not a developer. But just an aside, this will be a very good skill for you to have. If you are a smart contract auditor, right? And then you are also a DeFi farmer. This will be very useful because when you read the contract, you actually know what is happening. You can spot any potential loophole or bugs. But as a normal person, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically this is an example of a smart contract. Okay, so back to the liquidity. So now I am at uh, BNB and Cake. I want to add liquidity. So what I can do is I connect my wallet, connect with MetaMask. And let's say I want to max out. So it is 50-50. So if I contribute 8 BNB, it will be 232 Cake equivalent. And I don't have enough kick. So what I can do is I reduce the amount of BNB that I want to contribute. It. So once it is done, you need to ensure you have this amount in your wallet. So right now my wallet has sufficient. You can click supply. And when you click supply, you will see this. You will receive 36.3135 BNB kick pool token. So this is your liquidity pool token. When you stake it, you will receive this token. And after you receive this token, it is not the end. You need to stake it to earn the APY. Okay, so you click confirm. And because we are on Binance Smart Chain, the transactions are very fast, very cheap as well. Which is why I can do a live demo. For Ethereum, maybe not, because sometimes I need to wait longer. I need to pay a lot as well. So you can see the gas fee here is 0 0.002 BNB, which is a few cents only, which is very cheap, which is why we encourage beginners to use this. You can click confirm. And then you can see transaction submitted. So you can view the transaction because blockchains are transparent. You can see everything it is pending, but it will be confirmed in a short while. While waiting for it to confirm, we can actually go to the staking part. Because here you see stake LP token to earn. We have already get the liquidity pool token. Just waiting for it to confirm. Okay, so it's successful already. 31 seconds ago. Now because we already got the liquidity pool token, we can stake it. Why we need to do two times is because the first time is we contribute to the liquidity pool. After that, we need to stake the liquidity pool token in order to get the yield. So here you can click stake LP. And now I have 36 
Kick BNB liquidity pool token. I can click max. I can click confirm because I want to stake this token to get some interest, get the APY. So I can click confirm. And then you click confirm. And then you pending confirmation. All right, so H say your brave looking good. I, I think I know what you mean because if you look at my brave right side, right, you can see so many explorer and you think you can think why. It's because when you are on different blockchain, they have different ways to interact with the blockchain, not just MetaMask. So if you are someone really looking into DeFi, right, eventually your browser will look like mine. Let's say um, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, you will use MetaMask a lot. But let's say you use the Terra, Explorer, uh, the Luna blockchain. I don't know, is, is it called Terra or Luna? You'll need to download their Explorer as well. And for example, I stake Zilliqa. I will need a Zilliqa wallet, which is why I have this extension as well. And if you stake Polkadot, you also have their Polkadot wallet. And because blockchains are mostly not interoperable for now, you will need all this, like Ronin wallet, Polkadot wallet, Zilliqa pay, Binance chain, Terra station. So different blockchain, different way to interact. So this is just to share. Okay, so now I have staked the LP. So you can see 36.311 staked and I'm earning 99.97% in APR. So this is already staked as you can see. And just talking in a few seconds, you can see that while talking, I have earned 0 0.001 kick from this staking that I just take a few seconds ago. All right, so this is just an example of how you can um, start your new farm, how you can start farming. So here, because I already staked the liquidity pool token, you can see that I am beginning to earn cake already as the yield. Okay, and the yield is 99% APR for now. It is not always the same. It will always fluctuate. And let's say you want to harvest. Harvest means you want to collect your reward. You can click harvest. But right now, it is not worth it for me to do it because I only earn 0 0.017 USD dollar. If I harvest, maybe I pay more in transaction fee. Okay, so here I just want to quickly share and this is um, an example of how we have successfully just contributed liquidity to Cake slash BNB pair. Okay, so if we go back to the homepage, you can see farms and staking. Um, Kick has a very good UI. I can actually see right now, I already accrue 0 0.002 kick that I can harvest. Okay, and they also have a lottery for those that like lottery. Yes, yeah, so basically this is the end of my demo of how we can actually contribute to a liquidity pool in Kick, a pancake swap. And this is just an example because there are so many liquidity pool you can contribute to in different protocols. And PancakeSwap is just one protocol in Binance Smart Chain. All right, so uh, this is the end of our sharing. And thank you so much for a lot of you here still with us, 40 of you here. So thanks so much because we overrun by half an hour already. And thank you for joining. If you have more questions, you want to keep in touch, feel free to join us on Telegram. Feel free to um, input in our Google form for the causes as well. And then we will follow up from there. And thanks everyone. Have a great Thursday night and we will see you again next month. So you can vote for whatever topic you want. Maybe intro to NFT and then we will share on NFT. And for those of you who want to learn more about blockchain, next week we have another sharing by Dennis. So feel free to attend as well because it's free. So thank you so much and uh, we have come to the end of the session. All right, have a great Thursday night and then uh, I'll just end it now. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for the interesting session. Thank you. Hope everyone here learned something new. All right. Yes, I do for sure. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. You too. Pleasure. Thanks for H.